Hi everyone, thank you for joining us. I'm Rena Ninen. Time is running out for folks in the path of Irma as it barrels towards Florida, putting nearly everyone in the state at risk. Irma is far larger than the last massive life-changing storm that hit the U.S. Hurricane Andrew in 1992. The big concern right now is getting as far away from Irma as possible. Officials in Florida ordered an unprecedented evacuation. We're talking more than 5 million people. That's a quarter of Florida's population. We're all told to get out. The storm tore through Cuba's northern coast as a Category 5 hurricane early this morning with maximum sustained winds of 130 miles per hour. There are at least 20 storm-related deaths across the Caribbean. Irma is roughly the size of Texas, and it's expected to strengthen as it approaches Florida. The current track as the storm takes a turn for the worse, traveling up Florida's Gulf Coast and into the southeastern United States by Monday. The hurricane's outer bands are beginning to lash South Florida and the Keys with wind and rain. Irma is so big, 100 plus mile winds and storm surge will likely batter Florida's east and west coasts once it makes landfall. Jonathan Vigliotti is in Naples, Florida for us now. Jonathan, we understand Naples is in far more danger than it was about 12 hours ago. What's the biggest concern right now for the west coast of Florida? Yeah, we're here right now in downtown Naples. You could see it looks like a ghost town as this area really prepares for this storm. I'm going to spin you around so you could see some of the last minute preparations, which will give you a sense of some of the main concerns. Obviously, this, this plywood going up here to cover this glass. This is one of the last businesses here on this strip that has not been completely boarded up. All of this will help protect against the wind and all the objects that Irma could carry within it. But the real big concern here today and as we get into Irma, as true impact tomorrow is that storm surge. We've heard so much about this. Officials now saying that it looks like it could be anywhere from six feet to possibly 12 feet high. I'm about six feet tall. So when you look at me compared to a building here, this gives you a little bit of perspective. That's a wave of water. My height possibly twice my height that could be coming into downtown and of course the surrounding area. We're only five blocks away from the ocean. So that surge very critical, what a lot of people and of course what a lot of uh, officials here are keeping a close eye on as we get closer to Irma's impact. Boy, that comparison really makes uh, really sets it in, in stark contrast. I want to ask you, though, it's my understanding that the city is less than three feet above sea level. What preparations are underway for a storm surge? Yeah, just three feet. And in fact, the, the real barrier here, the, the, the kind of first line of defense is a sand dune that is only a few feet high. So once that storm surge comes, I mean, there's really nothing that's going to stop it from coming into the homes that we saw earlier. They're right on the coast. And of course, right here, we see the plywood. Yeah. This has nothing to do with storm surge. This is specifically for wind. Obviously, wind is a huge concern, but the storm surge, that's not something that you can fix with shutters. You can't fix that with plywood. Water gets in. Uh, you can't do anything about that. Officials know that. And that's why they have been so very crystal clear from the beginning of when it became apparent that this area was going to be hit, that people needed to evacuate. Really, the only thing you can do, the only real action, uh, almost seems kind of a passive action. It's just getting out. It's fleeing. And we've heard that word time and time again. The governor, uh, countless officials uh, going here on television, on the radio, trying to get that word out for people in this area, in low-lying areas that are part of that mandatory evacuation, like much of Coastal Collier County here in Naples certainly telling them it's time to leave. Really, they're saying you don't have much more time left. So if you are on the fence, you got to get out. Yeah, it's really a matter of minutes is what the state, the governor's been saying this morning. I want to ask yeah. you, though, folks in Florida who lived 25 years ago through Hurricane Andrew know how it devastated that southern region. Were there any lessons learned, Jonathan? Are people building uh, properties differently to handle this type of a hurricane? Yeah, that storm, Hurricane Andrew, 1992, it, it defined the way that we came to understand hurricane preparedness. At that point, it hit South Florida, an area called Homestead. It leveled most of the buildings there. Many of those buildings weren't built to a strong enough code to withstand hurricane force winds, certainly not a Category 5 storm like Andrew was. And it, it, I think for the first time, it really changed the language we used. You hear now hurricane building codes. In fact, when you go around here, people are very quick to tell you my house is a is hurricane building code certified uh, so it changed the way that buildings are made certainly a, an amazing thing obviously the buildings here are, are very much stronger and, and I think that's why you have a lot of people who were on the fence initially because they have these buildings that they're told could withstand anywhere from hundred to upwards of 180 mile per hour winds one person was telling us 
and they feel secure, but it's a false sense of security, of course, when you take into account the storm surge, which most buildings simply can't stop from coming. Absolutely right. I see those gentlemen behind you there in that red car, Jonathan. Looks like they're packing up, but I'm curious yeah. if there are any people who have decided to stay and hunker down that you've spoken to. So, so the, this guy here and a, a number of them that you'll see around here are some of the amazing people that are kind of riding out this storm right now as they're trying to secure all of these local businesses. And some of those last minute homeowners that have decided, you know what, what am I doing? I need to leave. I spoke with one homeowner yesterday as I was taking a tour of this area. Uh, he was on the fence. Uh, he was going to stay in his house. Uh, and, and you can't blame him because initially, I, I think it was just 48 hours ago, this storm was going to the East Coast. We're on the West Coast, totally different side, totally different kind of storm. But of course, the last 24 hours was this true reality check for people. Suddenly they said, what am I doing? That guy asked himself exactly that. Him and his wife were actually packing up their car and leaving. I spoke with a guy, though, today, and he lives uh, just, I think it was two or three blocks from the Gulf, uh, right in that evacuation zone. He is only 12 feet uh, above the sea level, so he is certainly completely in the impact of this possible surge. And he was very defiant. He said he knew the concerns, but he was staying. We actually have sound from him. Uh, take a listen if you can. Why did it never occur to you, or why did you write off the idea of, you know, let's play it safe. Let's just go somewhere dry, somewhere where you don't even have to question whether or not the storm surge is going to hit you. I have a problem leaving my house. I'm boarded up. Yesterday was a full day of work. I actually worked till about uh, 8.30 last night, and I'm still doing some work now. So, you know, if things start to fall apart, um, I understand I-75 is is free, so not much traffic. So I'll, I'll head north with my sons. But I'm just going to play it by ear, really, see what happens. I've got some safe areas in the house as well, the bathroom, of course. So T Take me through that. So what, what is your plan to ride out this storm? What are you going to do when the wind starts picking up and possibly when that water starts to really move well, in? Well, when the wind starts picking up, I'm going to, you know, to the point where I think it's, it's, it can be dangerous. Um, I'm going to, because I have a clear view out the back so I can see what's happening across the lake. I can see what's happening at the golf course. And um, I'm going to go into the bathroom, basically. And Honker down in the bathroom when there's no windows. You saw the track. I'm sure you were monitoring this over the course of the past week. Initially, it was making a direct hit for the East Coast. That changed really within the past 24 hours. Correct. Now you're in the crosshairs of this storm. What went on in your mind as you saw that tracking change, putting you right in the middle? Nothing really changed my mind. I mean, I, I had intended on staying here all along. Mm. And, you know, Rena, what's interesting is as that interview went on and on and on, as I spoke with him, he sounded more and more and more scared. And I stopped him and I said, you're in a dangerous place. You need to leave. And there was it was almost he was in doubt. He, he said, yes, you're right. I do No, I'm going to stay. Uh, I think at some point I convinced him he should go. I don't know what he's going to do, uh, but but we certainly did try to drive that home to him. Should be pointed out, he has a wife that did flee. He, he is just so devoted to staying and riding out wow. this storm. He's going to do it in his bathroom, as you heard. And we've heard uh, one person describe the bathroom as the war room. So these <laughs> bathrooms really becoming a place of refuge for people that are reluctant and, and staying here to ride out this storm. Yeah, I grew up in Florida, and you know we don't have basements or places, even storm shelter areas, really, yeah. in just about every room in our home has a window, so I, I feel for him and I understand the dilemma. Jonathan Vigliotti, stay safe, you and the crew as well. Thank you for Thank joining you. us, Jonathan.